Where are my sunglasses? Oh, look at now. Where the heck are they? Are you not picking it up because it's under your name? Whatever you can run. It's really good thing that was the right one. What if I ask that? Mm -hmm. How long do you think I should write it? Hmm? Well, I'll have to take everything down and stop it. Can you look in your email and see if and email the, the email that I just sent to her and say this is MC Fox? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
stuff, and then where did it come from? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. How's it going, buddy? Good. How are you? Doing great. Give me one second. I had everything running. I was about to call you and make sure that you got the thing. Give me one second. I got you. Hey, tell me your first name. Uh, Josh. Josh. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Or do you want me to call you MC Popsicle? Yeah, that's good. Good for branding. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk. So it's set up kind of funny because I'm talking. I'm on a green screen, and what I'm gonna do is I'm addressing the audience, which is out this way, and you're gonna be inside of an arcade cabinet. Like we're gonna like CGI you into a cabinet. So I'll be talking back and forth, kind of. But okay. that that'll be what's happening basically. But I'm just gonna introduce you and then talk about cool stuff. And that's about okay. it. <laughs> All right. What up, party people? It's your boy, MC Popsicle. And today, we are talking to Chris Casamassa, the president of the Red Dragon Karate School, eighth degree black belt, fourth national open forum champion, two-time... Wait, I messed that up. I'm going to do this in post. Okay. And by the way, I'm ninth degree <laughs> black belt. I'll do that in post. That, that's a lot. Okay. That's hard. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? <laughs> doing good. So you have a lot of championships. You have six. six uh, I'm a four-time. I'm a four-time national champion. That means I won the overall championship four years in a row. Wow! And what does open form mean? Uh, that means anything goes. It's probably one of the hardest divisions to win in. Really? So yep. it's just every style or what? Yep. Wow! And then I noticed you had two weapons championships what kind of weapons were there uh the weapon i used was a weapon called the comma which is like a, a stick with a blade on the end of it and you hold one in each hand wow how do you do that without like decapitating people uh it's it's a bit tricky oh my gosh that's crazy are they both for that or did you do another weapon too uh, i actually can do all, all almost every martial arts weapon i can perform with but the combo was my favorite it's the one i won the championships with so wow. i kind of to that one that's very cool that you are a bargain getting to talk to you because of all the other stuff you've done plus all the karate stuff on top of that that is insanity so we normally start by asking what is your favorite or some of your favorite movies of all time Okay. Uh, well, Enter the Dragon, of course, is a classic. Um, yeah. I like that one. Listen, I'm a big fan of all the Marvel stuff that's going on right now. I'm not going to lie. So. Me too. Yeah, that's that's up the Infinity Wars and Endgame and the whole uh, Avengers series itself was uh, was right up there for me. So. Me too. What's your favorite superhero? Iron Man. Me too. Me too. I wouldn't want. I mean, I would like to be a billionaire, but. I would like to have, I guess, practically, I would like Vision's powers because he, he's almost like a god or something. But I think yeah, Vision's got a little bit of everybody. Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man. Well, would be really Listen, like my childhood superhero was Spider Man. Oh, really? So yeah. Spider -Man. I love Spidey. I love Tom Holland as Spidey. I think he's the best one so far. Me too, because all the other guys were like too old and it didn't really work for me. They were. I mean, they were good, but it was kind of hard to imagine that it was kind of like Greece when everybody was like 35 being in high school and you're like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. But so you mentioned, you said Enter the Dragon. Was, was that the movie you said? Enter the Dragon, yes. So you like Bruce Lee a lot? Yeah, he was my idol when I was growing up. Was who, like, when you were growing up, was he like your main karate guy that you liked the most? Yeah, for me and probably most everybody around that time, you know what I mean? It was Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. Mm -hmm. so. Did you like Chuck Norris too? Chuck's a great guy. I actually got to work with him on, on Walker, Texas Ranger. And really? I do a fight scene on camera, so it was cool. He's awesome. Really? Wow. That's crazy. 
that's really cool like uh chuck norris <laughs> that's funny all those jokes and stuff they have about him but i think they're true <laughs> yeah. but um so just in general with karate like are those guys as good as some of the like people that are not on tv or not known of like are there way bigger better guys than even them but they just never made it into tv yes who's somebody that is worth looking at that did not get all the like fame and accolades and stuff like that well there's people that are still trying but there's some there's some super talented martial arts uh guys and girls out there you know girls like caitlin shell who ended up being the double for wonder woman uh has oh. done some great stuff Mike Chat has done some amazing stuff and, and created his XMA team. So there's there's a there's a plethora of martial arts potential superstars out there right now. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check them out. That's really cool. I didn't think about the, the stunt woman of Wonder Woman. Yeah, I'm sure that was a really hard <laughs> thing. <laughs> I was gonna ask you this. I don't know much about karate and stuff like that. My dad was a boxer and um so is situationally who would win if there's like a top karate guy and a top boxing guy and they were to face off would it just depend on the situation who would come out of that on top or is it like are the rules would have to be a certain way or what well listen there's two there's two ways to play that out right there's are we going to fight with rules or are we going to fight because mm -hmm. there's no rules in a fight right there's rules in a match so mm -hmm. it all depends, right? You know, if, right. You're, if you're fighting a boxer in a boxing ring, the best karate guy in the world is probably going to lose. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're fighting a, a martial artist in a martial arts tournament and you're only a boxer, you're probably going to lose. Mm -hmm. But in a fight fight, <laughs> whoever's got the right. hardest first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would like to. It's crazy that they're doing all these fights with like the, have, did you watch any of the fights with like uh, Logan Paul? and stuff like that. I try not to. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, I saw a, a picture where they were holding up. Uh, he was fighting Mayweather, which is like, that's ridiculous. There's no way on earth that he could even contend with Mayweather. And he was like trying to like prop him up. And yeah. it's so ridiculous because there's just no way in the world that he could possibly even compete against somebody like that. So they're just making so much money on the spectacle of it, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> that's ridiculous. But so you were Scorpion, which is so crazy. I have so many pictures of me dressed as Scorpion when I was a little kid because Scorpion is my absolute favorite Mortal Kombat character. So it is like such an honor to talk to you. It's like blowing my mind. Like, how did that come about? How did you end up doing that? Well, first of all, I just want to say that's the only reason I'm on your show is because you're such a big Scorpion fan. Because if you weren't <laughs> you said Sub Zero, I probably would have just deleted the whole conversation right now. No, <laughs> well, like Scorpion is so much cooler. Like he's just so bad. Like in all the games and stuff, because I played the games first before I watched the movies, and like he's just by far the coolest character. Like, yeah, Scorpion, uh, was my, uh, Scorpion was my favorite character. Scorpion and Raiden were my uh, two favorite characters when I was playing the video game growing up. So and, you played it before? Oh, yeah. You were playing it before the movie came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was a big... Raiden was actually my number one character and Scorpion was number two. I was really good at Raiden. But then after I got the part, I said, well, I better get even better with Scorpion so I can just crush people and they want to play me. Yeah, um, I like Scorpion. He's, he's very cool. How did you do that? How did you get from, like playing a game to get him to be the guy in the movie what'd you do well li listen like i said when i was a, a growing up i bruce lee was kind of my idol and i always thought well I, i'd love to be in in movies i'd like to do martial arts in movies so it was always a goal of mine of something i wanted to do uh so while i was competing on the pro tour for tournaments uh i was also kind of sticking my big toe in some acting stuff and, and doing you know a movie here a tv show there and i'd done some small stuff uh and then I got the call to do the audition for Mortal Kombat, but it wasn't for any of the character parts. They were looking for background fighters. And if you remember the, the classic film, then you know there, there's background fighters that are cheering on when Johnny Cage is fighting Gor Goro or when Art Lean is fighting Goro. So th they were looking for guys, they wanted real martial artists to do that, that part. And so I go, cool, I've never been in a major Hollywood film before. So this would be a really neat opportunity for me to just get in and do the background work, meet some people. 
uh, and we went in for these, these auditions and there was like a hundred guys in this room and they said, well, we need like 50 guys. So I was like, all right, I, I'm pretty sure I can make this cut. I was the number one competitor in the world. I'm like, all right, I can, I can make the cut. And they had it set up like a tournament. They had essentially a square uh, open floor and they had a couple of guys sitting in chairs who were like the producer and the director and things like that. And they said, just show us your best stuff. So I watched a bunch of guys go and they were pretty good. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go. So I wanted to do something that would set myself apart that was different than what anybody else had done. So while I was doing my routine for these, these guys, I realized that they're sitting in chairs. They're only about three feet high sitting in the chair. I'm like, I can clear them. So I ran at them and I did a jump flying kick over the top of them. And I remember them sitting in their chairs like this going and looking at, watching me go over them. And had I hit them, I probably would have like not got anything, but I cleared them and I did some more moves and jumped back over them and I finished. I get a call that night says, hey, we want you to come back uh, the next day. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I go back and now there's maybe 25, 30 guys. And they said, well, we want to see you do some weapon stuff. So I did my weapons. I get a call that night. Uh, we want you to come back. And I'm like, wow, it is so hard to be a background fighter in these movies, like three auditions, three callbacks. And so I go back the third time and there's just me and two other guys. There's only three of us. And they had told us on day one, like all the parts are cast. Uh, we're, not, we're looking for background fighters only, blah, blah, blah. But now there's only three of us. And I'm like, well, they said they needed like 50 guys. So I don't know what's going on, but they had a movie camera set up and they had a bunch of other people I hadn't seen before. And they were essentially just kind of, they were, the three of us were just standing there, three guys in a row and they were filming us with the camera. And then one of the guys came over who ended up, I didn't know he was the director because I hadn't met anybody, but they go, uh, they said the oddest question in the world. And they go, did you guys mind taking your shirt off? And unfortunately I'm a bit of a smart ass and I was also nervous. So I didn't know what else to say. So I said, listen, if it'll help me get in the movie, I'll even go back to your trailer. <laughs> right? That was the response I wanted. I wanted to laugh, but he didn't laugh. Just stone face looked at me. And I'm like, oh, whatever this is, like I'm out. So we, we took our shirt off and I'm in really good shape and I was in really good shape at that time. And so they're just kind of filming back and forth. And they essentially, these guys go into this football huddle for what seemed like an hour. It was probably only a minute. Uh, and the same guy who I made the joke to walked over, shook my hand. He said, Welcome to Mortal Kombat. You're going to be Scorpion. Wow. And so it happened like that. So it really was, it was a chance opportunity that it just happened at the right moment. Now, I don't know if the roles had actually been cast or not to this day. Even the producer, won't, he's like, ah, we're not telling you. Or if they were still looking for somebody, but that's kind of how it played out. And, uh, you know, I was just the right person at the right time with the right talent that they were looking for. Wow. That is incredible. That is so you had no idea that they were even looking for somebody for that. No that idea. Is, that is crazy. I bet you were just over the moon. Had you I done was more totally stuff? Excited because like I said, I was a big fan of the game. So I was stoked. And, you know, I got home and I called my mom. My, mom, 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 I'm going to be Scorpion. I'm going to be Scorpion. She goes, that's great, honey. What's a Scorpion? <laughs> wow. She had no Man. idea. Yeah, that must have been crazy. Were you there a long time? Where were you, first of all? Were you in the, I know that they shot a lot of it in LA and then they went to like an island or something in the middle. Yeah, Thailand. A couple different locations in Thailand and in LA. We shot at, uh, a couple sound stages in LA as well. So, so uh, you were in both? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah How I, was it in Thailand? Did you like it? Say that again. Did you like Thailand? Had you been there before? I, I was never there before. It was beautiful, uh, beautiful country. And, uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so I read, I'm, I'm a big fan. I need to send you, I've done a video reviewing. I feel, I feel like I should be wearing glasses because you have glasses on. So I'm not. Yeah, so that's a thing with me. So I'm a DJ and an MC on Bourbon Street, or I was before the pandemic. And In so, New Orleans? Um, that was my thing. So I wear, since I'm popsicle, I wear all bright colors and I started wearing sunglasses because I was like, I don't need uh, to fight for people's attention if I already have it. So if I just dress super wild, then I already have it. So that was my, that's my thing. Now I'm sponsored by the sunglasses company. So well, good for you, <laughs> man. Hey, but um, anyway, so how long were you there or how long were you shooting in total? Uh, we're on the shoot for about three and a half months. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I heard that everybody was getting hurt <laughs> mostly the entire time. Like everybody was getting like slightly injured. 
a little bit. Well, yeah, listen, on an, on an action show like that, there's always bumps and bruises that happen. But I mean, overall, the production was completely safe. You know, Lyndon and I, who played Johnny Cage, when we were fighting up on the platform, like he accidentally punched me in the head uh, one time. It was an accident. And he freaked out, but it was, you know, I do this for a living. So I'm still going. And he's like, oh my God, oh my God. He wanted to stop. But other than that, nothing beyond the normal bumps and bruises on a fight show. He did a very good job as Johnny Cage. Like, yes, he did. I thought he did a perfectly good job of that because I wasn't, I was about like the ninjas and I liked uh, Scorpion and like Noob Sabit and all those guys. But he made me like Johnny Cage because he's kind of like with Iron Man, you associate the personality with the character. Like mm -hmm. Robert Downey Jr. made. Iron Man, like without him, it wouldn't have, I felt like he did that for Johnny Cage and I thought that he did a really good job. I agree. And listen, Lyndon's a really good actor and he's very dedicated to his craft. And to his credit, listen, we trained, you know, he got a crash course, a two, three month crash course in martial arts. He'd never done it before, uh, before the filming. But after, like we became friends and after the filming ended, he was actually a student of mine for a year and a half. He trained, wow. came once, twice a week, he would come and train with me and keep going keep going he made it halfway to black belt with me and then wow. he started booking other jobs and, and got some other stuff going on so he didn't get to make it all the way to black belt but he was super dedicated and he was actually really good yeah he did good i mean in the movie it looked great i mean it looked like he knew what he was doing so good job to you that's pretty cool like um so did you choreograph any of it because i read that uh Liu Kang choreographed a lot of the actual fights in the movie but then I read that you two guys, you and uh, Johnny Cage worked it out between yourselves with the, the fight in the in the woods. Yes. Well, the fight coordinator is Pat Johnson. Uh, so uh, uh, the guy who played Liu Kang, Robin Shu, he choreographed his fight with uh, Reptile and I think with Sub-Zero. But the main fight coordinator's name is Pat Johnson, who was responsible for not only the Mortal Kombat action, but he did... Uh, Batman and Robin, he did all the Ninja Turtle movies, all the Karate Kid movies. So this guy, when it comes to fight coordination, really knows his stuff. And uh, what's great about Pat is he takes your talent and puts it into the fight. So when I got hired, he knew what I could do. And he's like, all right, these are your good moves. We're going to put these in here. These are your good moves. So he, he tells you the flow of the fight, lets you work on stuff. You bring it back to him. And he's like, all right, this works, this doesn't, this works, this doesn't. So you can shape the fight to where it's unique to your character. And because I was a fan of the game, I really wanted to put a lot of Scorpion's video game moves into the fight itself, you know, the, the uppercut and all that stuff. So we really did our best to get that in there. And he was great, great to work with as far as putting the fight together. And I couldn't talk him out of the fact that Scorpion should have won because it was part of the script. But other than that, he was awesome. Yeah, I was thinking about that earlier today. I was like, there's just no way that like these normal people, like we got Raiden, which is a god. We have Scorpion, which is like from the nether realm and can tear his face off and blow fire and stuff. And I was like, that, that's kind of a stretch <laughs> that, that they can win against them. But yeah, it's a movie. So I guess the good guys have to win. Yeah, they gotta but do that. Also, like, so if, say you were not, Scorpion, you're, so you said your favorite character would be Raiden? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I thought that uh, Lambert did a good job also. He, he made that funny. <laughs> Love him. was really good. Oh, one of my other favorite movies, which is the Highlander series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They did a really good job casting for uh, Mortal Kombat. I thought, because I did a review on this actually before. I need to send you that. You probably think it was funny, but like, uh, we gave it very good reviews saying that it like it's perfect for like because that was one of the first video game movies i mean there was like one or two it was, it was the first one to be successful there had right. been two other ones that had come out at the box office and had bombed and that was the other great thing about our movie is nobody expected us to do well and we opened and we were number one the number one movie in the world for like six i think six weeks in a row number one soundtrack um so it was awesome because both Street Fighter and I think it was Double Dragon had come out previously in theaters, but neither one of them did really well. And then we came out and just kind of just crushed expectations. And I give the producer, Larry Kazanoff, all the credit for that because he really wanted, A, to stay true to the game, which those other two movies kind of didn't, and, and so that the fans weren't really happy. And number two, he wanted to bring in the best martial artists possible for each of the roles that really required that 
that fighting thing. So like, you know, he brought in myself and Francois Petit, who was Sub-Zero. You know, Robin Shu is a great martial artist. Keith Cook, who played Reptile, is another national champion. So when you bring in that caliber of talent, you can design the fights in a way that stays true to the game and is really a lot of fast-paced action. So he, Larry Kasnoff, gets a lot of the credit for that and the success of the film. Wow. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. <laughs> I really loved it. It was awesome. Um, also, I got another question. I was reading about you, and you were stunt guy for Batman? Yeah, Batman and Robin. I double for George Clooney whenever you see Batman punch or kick. Uh, that's wow. not Batman. That's me. Really? Yeah. Wow. I bet that was crazy. Like, I love Batman. That Batman. Was, I can tell you how fun that was. I'm probably one of only maybe a dozen people on the planet that has ever worn the actual bat suit from the film. So just to be able to have that opportunity to be on that set, to wear that thing, I mean, what a what a great gig that was. It was a really good time. Yeah, growing up, Batman was everything to me. That's like, right. so that is so, so cool. What did it feel like? What was it, what was it like? Heavy? It feels like as soon as you put it on, you have to find a mirror so that you can stand up and look at yourself and just go, <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> but the costume itself, like I don't know the, the new one, the Christian Bale outfit, how they have it, but that one was very heavy. It was 35 pounds of skin tight rubber and a leather cape that was eight feet long that came off the back. So it was, it was a bit of a nightmare to be in and to do the fights that we did in them was even more challenging, but it was a great challenge and uh, I had a fantastic time doing it. But you were doing like all the fights, like the whole time. Wow. Yep. Yeah. So there's different stunt Batman for each part. There's there's a car driving Batman. There's a high fall Batman. There's a fighting Batman. So I was the fighting guy. That's pretty good. Yeah. You don't want to be like the, the one for everything. <laughs> That's scary. But like, so what was the most? What stood out to you the most? Like, what do you remember the most about it? Like as far as scenes, like which one was the most well, fun? I remember the most, unfortunately, is is not very good because there were probably 20 minutes worth of fights that we shot in that bat suit that never made it into the film. Ah. And if you go back and, and watch that film, you'll see that that George Clooney wasn't a proven star at that time. Like he's a major big star now, but he had just come off of ER and a couple other movies. So the studio, I think, wasn't really sure that he could carry a major motion picture. But Arnold Schwarzenegger and Uma Thurman were huge stars at that time. So if you go back and watch the movie, you'll see the movie's more about them than it is about Batman. Right. So a lot of his stuff got cut down, which means a lot of our stuff. Like we filmed some of the greatest fight scenes that just aren't in the movie. And it's just, I would love to just go back and be able to get that footage because, I mean, there, you know, you'll see a two minute fight scene. There was a 10 minute fight scene. Wow. So, yeah, that sucks. They need to, like, we need to. I don't, wait, who made that? Silver? Yeah, get, a cut, get a Snyder cut of the old yeah, Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet if people would watch it, I bet people would be really excited about that. Sure they would. What is your favorite, well, excluding the ones you're in, what, what's your favorite Batman movie, you think? You know, I really like the Christian Bale version of him. I think he did mm -hmm. a spectacular job, and I, I love the story that, that Christopher Nolan wrote uh, around that trilogy. So uh, I was a big fan of that whole, that whole arc. Me too. I thought that Ben Affleck did an okay job, but I didn't think the movies were nearly up to par as what they should have been. Like, uh, I think that Christopher Nolan's overall was way better, but I think there's a problem with some of the Batman is they don't stand out very much. Like, they don't do deep character studies on Batman a lot, and I kind of wish they did because it's kind of like he's more one note than a lot of the bad guys, and I wish that weren't the case, you know? Yeah, listen, I think Affleck's doing a pretty good job as Batman. I think Christian Bale's, in my opinion, a little bit better at it, but he was, Christian Bale was done and, and Affleck stepped in. I think he's a good choice. Um, you know, I think this, the, the young kid, the vampire kid, I can't think of his name. Oh, uh, Robin, uh, Patterson. Patterson. Robert Patterson. Patterson. Robert Patterson. I think it, the preview, it's fucking spectacular. Yeah. It's probably the best Batman preview I've ever seen out of all of them. So I'm hopeful that he's that he's going to do a, a really good job, and they're going to do some justice. And speaking of justice, I hope DC takes some notes from Marvel yeah. about what you're saying, which is the character development stuff like that. The reason that we're all so wound up in the whole Marvel universe is the way they brought everything together in a cohesive arc. I mean, the vision and the planning that that Marvel has and had is just spectacular. And you know, if there's anyone from DC watching, you need to take some notes. 
Amen. No, because I was I was so excited about Justice League and all that kind of stuff, and now I'm like scared of it. Like, like I haven't seen. Well, listen, the Snyder Cut had they originally released the Snyder Cut. I mean, now you've got a whole different movie. Yeah, it was That's definitely better, better than, than the version they released. So it was definitely a lot better. Like, um, so did you get to meet any of the like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger or any of those oh, yeah. people? Really? Yeah, yeah. I, got to, I got to meet them all. It was awesome. He was nice. He was yeah. cool. Yep. Cool guy. All the good stuff you hear about George Clooney is all true. He's the nicest guy in the world. Um, and especially once he saw what we were doing in the bat suit, because I told him, I go, I'm going to make you look amazing. And then he came to rehearsals one day and saw us and he's like, let's go to lunch. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. It was and cool. Like, uh, that. It has been very great to talk to you. I don't want to take up any more, any more of your time, but like, I'm a huge fan and thank you very much for talking to us for a few minutes. We, we appreciate it. Yeah, man, my pleasure. Thank you so much. I appreciate all the fans, man. Uh, young and old doesn't matter as you guys have helped keep the Mortal Kombat legacy alive. So I appreciate you and appreciate all the fans. Thank you, buddy. Bye, bud. I'll talk See to ya. you soon. You got it. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. How's that? How's that? Good. I didn't pin the video at first. Uh, Hope that comes out. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there. Okay.